You're always on the go, it's going to be tough, it's going to be good days, it's going to be bad days, just like any job I suppose. I think this job role makes a huge difference to the lives of everyone in defence. As an operating department practitioner, at the end of the day, it's rewarding because you're enabling the surgeons you need to do their job. The proudest moment is becoming a military nurse. During this series, you'll be um, within the Queen Elizabeth Hospital. Each episode will follow military staff working alongside their NHS counterparts within different departments of the hospital. The best bit is getting the skills and knowing that going forward, there's a trade for me. The Royal Centre for Defence Medicine was uh, officially opened in April 2001 by Her Royal Highness the Princess Royal. A year later, it was Her Majesty the Queen uh, granted permission for us to use the royal title. RCDM provides a strategic base delivering business as usual activity, such as treating uh, patients and pre preparing our clinicians, nurses and support staff for operations. We also support resilience in the UK by working alongside our NHS counterparts. RCDM comprises of a, a full spectrum of uh, military healthcare. Uh, it includes um, highly specialised capabilities such as reconstructive surgery, pathology and radiology and sexual health, which can be deployed in theatre due to it being too time consuming. So the first members of staff to arrive at the Royal Centre for Defence Medicine uh, and were put into the University Hospital Birmingham Trust were only seven nurses and they were put into the emergency department. Since then, um, they've been joined by doctors, clinicians, specialists, nurses, therapists and support staff and they work throughout this NHS Trust and they are now total approximately of 500 military personnel now that work within the uh, RCDM and the University Hospitals in Birmingham. No two days are the same working here. Um, one day you could be working in triage and seeing all the people come through the front door and deciding who's needs to be seen quickly, or you could be in the resource room um, with you know road traffic collisions, with people getting shot, people getting stabbed, which gives you great trauma experience um, for when you deploy. I didn't think that I would come to A&E and, you know, be good at it. I was a bit worried because I thought I'd try somewhere a bit different, but they put me here and they said, no, I think you'd be great. I got stuck in. The stuff I've learned is probably what I'd never learn on a normal day if I was on a normal ward. The best feeling is having a critical patient. Like, um, you know that this is not possible, however, you could see that there has been a rapid change in their care and coming back to their normal life and then thanking you of what you have done is the most happiest thing ever in, in, in my career. It's a very challenging job, you know, it can affect you. It's the highs that you, that you take home when you've changed somebody's life or you've made their day. I think for me, that's what makes HCA and if you can do that, no matter how busy you are, then you're, you're always happy and you do what you love so I, and I love that, it's great.